we are still dealing with the teachings of the end times and I say that these teachings should not be scary to the believers in fact when you now begin to go through scripture you understand what Christ really said most of the times when people teach the end times they put the church on an exit mode and it looks like there is an emphasis of he dunia hukusi kwenu. And I want to tell you the truth. Ni kwenu si kwetu lakini kuna sababu mbona tuko hapa mbaka sasa. There is a reason why you did get born again and got raptured immediately. There is a reason. And so when I study the revivals immediately after the first world war. Revivals broke out in America. And these revivals were later hijacked. And the people that funded them were Freemasons and Satanists, the Illuminati. They funded the revival. They loved the language of Jesus is coming back and you are going to a better place and this world is not your home, especially that part. And the church was put on an exit door. People packed their bags, they stopped working, they stopped dreaming, they stopped believing God and they packed their bags and they were ready to exit the world. And that theology is called escapism theology. Are we together? Is Jesus coming back? Yes. And we will look from the parables what is expected of us. So the people were busy. They, they never worked. They abandoned their dreams. They abandoned their assignment. And they were preparing a church ready to go to heaven but a useless church on earth if today i hear that the trumpet is about to sound i have failed as long as limuru is not under jesus i have failed hallelujah the reason why we are here is to turn this kingdom into the kingdom of our lord and so the moment we focus on leaving the earth, having lost, witches are ruling, diviners are ruling, we have lost. Hallelujah. And that theology makes sense to people that have no ambitions in life and people that have nothing to live for. And I tell you, it's a theology that produces poor believers. Kwa sababu, hakuna kufanya kazi, siyuku sikwetu. And, and when they founded that theology in 1985, the church discovered we might be here for a while. And the theology changed and they began now with prosperity preaching. That's where the language of, um, you know, you shall be blessed, you shall increase. And a mentality was now brought that guys, we will be here for a while. Until guys now for God, yes, we are here, but again, Jesus is coming. Now we have a people, you tell them about the coming of Jesus, they are threatened. Because they became so comfortable and they became a part of the world that they were supposed to change. And now they need threats and movements of repentance and holiness. Hallelujah. I know I'm preaching good. Even if there are no amens. Hallelujah. So if this matter is not handled through scripture, you can raise a people that are very useless on earth. That they enter heaven having done nothing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you are here for something greater. You are a light on a hill. And the salt of the earth. And until you understand that. And know where God has positioned you. Then the message of rapture is a threat. Uh, Jesus will find me preaching. If I'll not be in my house resting. I'll be doing high school mission or doing service. Why? I was created for that. So I am not afraid that he's coming. Because I know I'm in the vineyard. And the truth is. 
He even said, we'll look at that parable next time. The parable of the talents. He told them, do business until I come. He didn't tell them, wait somewhere on the exit door until I come. He said, do business until I come. So tell your neighbor, neighbor, kuna kazi unafaa kufanya. And we need to do it quickly and urgently. So let's go to the parable of the ten virgins. And these are parable that needs to at least bring your consciousness alive. A parable was a narrative with a hidden meaning. A parable was a narrative with a hidden meaning. It was a story narrated. But in that story there was a meaning. A parable was a narrative or a story with a hidden meaning. And for you to understand any parable in the Bible, these three things are very key to understand a parable. These three things are very key. The first one is who's the audience? Who is Jesus speaking to? Because the audience there will help you know why the parable was used in the first place. So we need to know the audience. We also need to know the context and the content. The context is, what was the conversation? Wakati yo parabu iliachiliwa, ni nini walikuwa wanajadiliana? Ndiyo yo parabu ikasemwa. So that we know, in that conversation, Jesus said something as they were having this talk. And number three, is also key for us to understand, like in this parable, Jewish symbolism and grammar and language jewish symbolism grammar and language like in this parable the audience is the 12 disciples they were all jews the context was the second coming so this is a parable about the second coming and the symbolism can only be understood when we understand some few things about the Jews. So we are going to read the narrative and then we'll go verse by verse and then after that we will pray. Are you ready? Thank you. So if you can read, let's all read. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet their bridegroom. Let's go to two. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Are you seeing the word all? And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. All the virgins. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lambs are going out. Let's all read. But the wise answered saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who already went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. 12, everybody read. But he answered and said, As surely I said to you, I don't know you. 13. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Let's begin from verse 1. 10 is the number of divine completion. 10 is the number of divine completion. That's why we give a tithe. So we are seeing a completed union. 10. Is the number of divine completion. Hence this is a perfect and complete team. The bride there of course is the church. And the bridegroom is Christ. 
And we begin to see that they begin as one unit. One unit. The bride there is the church. And the groom is Christ. And we begin to see that they all began as one unit of ten virgins. This is what you need to understand. Virginity there, or that name virgins, means not defiled. They were pure. They were born again. They believed in the word of God. They knew the promises of God. They prayed and saw miracles. They gathered in church. They were members of family groups. They served in the praise and worship. They went for soul winning. They did all that that appertains to church. They are not divided according to sin. We don't have a sinful bride and as a, a, a pure bride, we have foolish and wise. So we are looking at a church and this is a parable that needs to open our hearts because it touches on the church and it tells me being church and being churchy is not enough. There is something more. There are people who are born again but will not enter heaven. That's what the parable is all about. That's what the parable is all about. I know we tell people when you get born again, right now when the trumpet sounds, you will go to heaven. Let me tell you, it is halfway truth. Ah, Jesus. Salvation is the first step of the journey. It is not the journey. The day you say, Lord Jesus, that is the day you made the first step of a long journey of relationship with Christ. So you can't get born again and go back to slumber. You get born again and begin a relationship. And it is that sustained relationship that guarantees you of eternity. So there are two virgins here. They all, I want you to see him. So they are divided into two. The wise and the, the wise and the foolish. But when we look at chapter number one, the Bible says they all had lambs. All of them had lambs. Now we need to go to the word and ask ourselves, what does the lamb represent? The lamb here represents the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 105. The lamb represents the word of God. The lamb represents the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 105. Everybody read. Your word is a lamb to my feet and a light to my... Now what does that scripture say? It does not say your word is like lamb. It says the word of God is the lamb. And I want you to see the sequence. It is the lamb to my feet. And then the light to my path. Because according to God, your next step is more important than the journey you are taking. God is not enticed by the path. He is enticed by the daily walk. Guarded of the word. The Bible says the steps of a just man are ordered. Oh Jesus. They are ordered of God. Not uh, what do I call? See kubembelezwa. Mungu anakuambia chukua hatua flani. They are ordered of God. It's a militant language. The steps of a just man are ordered of God. So we see now the word is lamp to my feet and light to my path. So the word of God, this one, the word of God is the lamp. The word of God is the lamp. Now you, you have to listen to this very carefully. Because the foolish virgins had the word. They had the word. They had the word. They knew the promises of God. They knew the written word. They knew what God is talking about. But there is something that he missed. The spirit. Even today, churches are divided into two. 
kanisa za kiroho hizo zingine ni za nini on sunday they gather they read the word but they have denied the move of the holy ghost i know churches where you can't speak in tongues on the pulpit because they say those things are happening in the old i know churches that don't believe in healing they don't believe in miracles a sister yesterday told me i was kicked out of a church because of preaching sexual purity and they told me even how you pray in the holy ghost it doesn't happen here they are called seeker sensitive they want to keep members but they don't want to raise disciples they have an opinion box where people give feedback after the service how was the pastor so every wednesday i must send my message to a team to audit what i'm about to preach that means i'm no longer hearing the voice of the holy ghost you can never rise and say thou says the lord why you are conditioned to send messages and they will audit no jesus ah oh, my goodness they have denied the power they have a form of godliness but i've denied the power they are many hallelujah Jesus kanisa inakuanganika corporate they have board of governors and shareholders yes eh yeah, members have the same to masivika pastor then they check which university did you go to oh, this one is an educated pastor my friend you can have a degree but not a calling hush the bible says separate for me paul and barnabas separate from that's the holy ghost not theologians i'm not saying theology is bad he said paul and barnabas for the assignment that i have for them there is an assignment that comes from the spirit so the moment the church embraces the word only without the spirit they will end up in religion kwani dini wanahubiringi koran so wanafungua ngai na motaratara yao yote ni si ni bible inasomangwa so wanaomba katika jina la Yesu lakini wamekatana na mambo ya roho ya roho the holy ghost can move there a young man was fired because the holy spirit fell in the first service and there was a problem of parking because now the people in the first service stayed under the anointing and the second service people came and the parking was chaos he was told you and your holy spirit leave he said it's a very good thing we are going to leave now mimi niliambia roho ajuke si ni hallelujah and i tell you we live in a time people don't have a problem with lamp they have a problem with oil and the church without oil ah jesus is a defeated church let me show you in the book of john chapter number 3 what the bible talks about kutoka leo utafurahi kuitwa kiroho sasa tutaitwa nini nyingine we are men of the spirit that's who we are and we are unpredictable you can't even know what we are talking about sasa hizi tunaweza maliza ibada Mungu atoe instruction ya kufunga the whole of next week haikuwa kwa calendar lakini mtafunga si ameongea yes the wind blows okay begin from 5 so that we begin to know where it begins this is nicodemus jesus answered most assuredly i said to you unless one is born of water and the spirit there is another bathing is called of water nicodemus goes to jesus and says rabbi he does not even see messiah he sees rabbi and he says okay you come in rabbi level i'll teach you mysteries and he says now listen unless a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom kuona who is yona and then he said how can a man go back to his mother's womb and jesus does not get carried away with the carnal thinking of nicodemus he said now listen unless a man is born of water the word and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom so there is the bathing of seeing okay munaona kana wadanganya waza tusome hii chapter kutoka mwanzo kwa sababu is good when we invited as guest preachers we release scriptures tunachofanya research now because i'm a resident pastor we can read si sande ni mimi bado nahubiri pastors wajaniambia kuna mtu anahubiri ni mimi na mimi ndo natwanga schedule ya kuhubiri so ni mimi niko i'm on duty on sunday there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews this man came to jesus by night and said to him are you seeing rabbi this means teacher 
He never saw him as the Messiah. He just saw a man who came with teachings and he said, wow. And then he had some miracles. We know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So he was still denying you cannot be the Messiah. You are just another lecturer in town come from God. So he's dealing with him from an intellect level. Pharisee, Pharisee theology. Now you have some things. And then Jesus now begins to answer. Look at three quickly. Jesus answered. Now, Jesus is answering what he has not asked. There is no question here. Alimwambia, wewe, wewe ni mwalimu. Hakuna mtu anaweza fanya hizi vitu unless hapo kuna swali. But kuna swali alikuwa anauliza akisema hivyo. So ilikuwa wacha twende kwa the main issue. Issue yako si ati mimi nafanya hizi vitu. Issue yako ni aje. Wewe ni mwalimu kama mimi na hauna hizi signs. <laughs> so wacha nikupe formula akamwambia listen Jesus answered and said most assuredly I said to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. That name kingdom means power and authority. Unless you are born again you cannot see the word is see. Many believers are in the same level. That's why they they have never believed they themselves are carriers of power. Can I have a church? And this thing level has made them believe unless Pastor D and Yombe hiki tuitaenda. Sometimes they come here on Wednesday. They bypass pastors. Akuja, uh, Pastor Peter, yes. Uh, can I help you? No, Pastor T. Aliza, <laughs> what's the problem? Mimi unless Yombe na Pastor T. You know, it's error. Because the Jesus I have, the other pastors have. But you see, they are in the first level of born again. For them, they are witnesses, not carriers. Uh, Kazi ni kuona miujiza. Because when you get born again, you believe in that power. Is someone hearing me? Now let's go quickly because this was not part of my message. Everybody read. No, no, go, go to four. See how carnal this teacher was. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus did not answer that foolish question. He continued with the lecture. He said, now, unless a man, uh -huh, most actually I said to you, unless one is born of water and what, can, what will happen? You see, water alone is not enough. There are people who talk about miracles, but they are not baptized by the spirit and water. It is speech. They can't walk in it. Do you know what the Bible says? It is the will of God for every believer to be a carrier of power. It is the will of God that also you can heal the sick. It is the will of God. You are manifesting his nature. Okay, let's read this scripture quickly. Before I get I chucked. Born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh -huh. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now he tells him, now there is another thing. There is another thing. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it but cannot tell. Where it comes from. And where it goeth. So is everyone. So he goes ahead and says, you see, unless you are born of water, but the birth of the spirit has velocity. Ah, 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 ah. ah Jesus. Unless you are the spirit, ah, it, it goes where it wants. When you read the book of Psalms, it says that uh, we don't know where, we know where the rains come from. We know where the sun comes from. But the wind comes from the treasury of God. Even scientists can never tell you where wind comes from. But the book of Psalms tells us that the wind comes from the treasury of God. And that wind, Ruach, the spirit, comes from the treasury of God. A man of the spirit cannot be stopped. He cannot be understood. He cannot be studied. He's a mystery. Because he cometh from the treasury of above. He is like a wind. You can build walls, but you can't stop wind. Are you getting me? This man has velocity. This man has motion. 
people that are people that all they do, they are bound with the word. They are rigid. Wakona systems. Wakona mikakakati. Wakona metaratara. Lakini roho wa mungu anatembeanga pale kuna freedom. Pastor, you're trying to say the word is bad. No. But the foolish virgins had the word only. It helped them to make them virgins, but they missed the day. It sanctified them, but it never qualified them. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you with a helper. So there are people who have abandoned the help of God and they want to move life with the lamp of God. The lamp cannot work without the oil. Jesus. Bona masomo ni ngumu ama muna digest pole pole. Semanga tu amen ijue tuko pamo. Hata wakikuyu wakiongea unasikia wakisema eni eh you know it's an agreement it's a conversation. Na ukisikia wamesema one ujue point imeisha. So let's go, let's go to the second agenda. Tell your neighbor neighbor the word and the spirit is what you need in this walk. Both of them are very key. Are we together? Both of them are very key. Now let's continue. So we have agreed that the lamp is the word. And we must agree that the oil is the Holy Ghost. Zechariah 4.3 The oil is the Holy Ghost. The oil is the Holy Ghost. Zechariah 4.3 the oil is the Holy Ghost. The two olive trees are by it. One at the right of the bowl. Maybe we can begin from one. Because now, sometimes I don't like picking scriptures then throwing them. Because I like building on a matter. Everybody read. Aha. Uh -huh. And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. That's a mystery. Leave it. Two olive trees are by it. One at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? The angel who talked with me answered and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no. And then the famous scripture without quoting. So he answered and said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The olive, the oil that gave flame to the lamb was gotten from a crushed olive tree. So there was no light without oil. And they needed to crush an olive tree for them to get the oil. And there was a forest where they planted olive trees that was supposed to be crushed for the olive oil. And it was called the Mount of Olives. May someone get this revelation. And when they went for Jesus, they found him at the Mount of Olives. A prophetic picture that as the priest crushed the olive tree to get the olive oil, another man will be crushed on Calvary to release the oil which is the Holy Ghost. So the church cannot survive without the oil. The lamb is useless without the oil. Because the work of the lamb is to produce light. And there are truths in this Bible that can never be understood until you mix the word with the oil. There are things that begin to become alive 
and you begin to see them when you read the Bible, not with the lenses of theologians, but with the eyes of the Holy Ghost. The reason why we can't understand the book of Revelation, it was written not by John, it was written by the Holy Ghost through John. The book of Revelation was like the way you go to class and you are given dictate, notes are dictated. You read it even the way it begins. And the Lord told me, don't write those ones. So there are things he said he wanted to write, was told, that one, no, leave that one. So it was not a book penned by John. It was a book written by the Holy Ghost through the hand of John. So until you have the writer, you can't understand the content. That's why even in theological schools, they don't teach us. They teach us three, the seven eschatological arguments of Revelation, and they leave it there. Because it takes a man to sit where John sat, to see what he saw. Hallelujah. Huh. So, so there are two virgins. They are pure, born again, members of the same church. But one is wise, the other one is foolish. This one makes me, I, 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 I feel threatened and it gives me some money just to know being in church alone is not enough. We make people believe attending church. In fact, there are people who even believe coming to church when I say, dear pastor, and sometimes the pastoral nature in us, in Afanya Tunafanya follow-up, Sijakuona Skutatu. By the way, coming to church does not help me. I have no heaven that I'm building for you. It helps you because you come and hear the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, the insight of God. You commune with God and become a better virgin. Are you getting me? But now because we began to build systems that are around us, now it looks like if you're not around, the system is collapsing. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Buenas fesana. And this is what I discovered. The days when you feel like you don't want to come to church, those are days when God meets you personally. Zile de una feeling game, as you sing easy in Jeve, Nini. Isn't do de una kujanga una feeling kama leo nili patana Holy Ghost. Because there is always interruption of encounters. Hallelujah. So let's go back to the parable. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you cannot be a foolish virgin. You can only be the wise virgin. Five of them are wise and five are foolish. Let's go to the next one. Three, quickly. Ah, Jesus. Those who are foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. Are you seeing the foolishness? It was not the absence of lamp, no. It was the absence of oil. And there is a lot of foolish men today who have decided that they will be put in systems and structures and they don't want anything to do with the Holy Ghost. I know a church in this city whereby they used to pray for men and the problem is those men rose in rank. They became CEOs and managers and they will come to church as CEO and an employee and they said, you know, when they fall under the anointing, it's not a good picture to the employees. Nonsense. It's the anointing that has made them fall. This has nothing to do with your CEO. By the time you get in that gate, you are not a CEO. You are not a manager. We are all children of God. Those are secular ranks that come by academics in the realm of the spirit. They are men that have ranks and they have no papers. So they say this thing of laying on of hands, let the spirit minister to them. Right now, people are dying of cancer and diabetes in that church. Why? There is a power, Kaposatire. When we lay hands, we release power. You deny that system, you die in your system. So they say, no, 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 you know, they, they became intellectuals. Mungu atawa inuwa mta kwa masiyo, lakini minta wakelea mikono. Nasu kwekelea ikasi yo, apana. Now here you have entered another order. You are not a CEO. You have now come to a council that has another protocol. It's a kingdom. title Wewe ni disciple na son of God. Ukitoka pale, pick your medals and transact them in Babylon. You need them in Babylon. But here, you need one title, son of God. Ah, Jesus. And I'm not... Elijah, see if you buy my company. GT director, manager, global director. No problem. Achapale. Okay. You know, because of my age, nakan can on give by. Lakin it is true. It is true. 
Those who are foolish took their lambs and no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their. So listen, there are those who had lambs only. Others came with vessels. Ah, ah Jesus. This is the vessel. As you carry the lamp, make sure there is oil in the vessel. Because that oil will make this lamp shine brighter. There are things in this word you can't understand by just reading. It will take the oil to illuminate some realities. There are secrets here. There are secrets. The Bible says it is the wisdom and it is in the heart of a king to conceal matters. But it is in the pleasure of, of kings also to reveal hidden matters. Secrets are hidden. Take the anointing to reveal them. Like right now, as I was, I've been studying this series of end time, a part of me was not very comfortable in looking like I'm encouraging the church all the time. I think me, I'm just a military man. And the Lord told me, sir, I will delay and my children need to be encouraged once in a while. So you can't be just hammering mysteries. Once in a while, tell them God loves you. Mungu anangilia kati. Once in a while. But I can't build a church of every Sunday telling you, and I once in a while we throw meat. Hallelujah. So that we the, you see you you mamba motivational preaching. So we just keep you busy. No, there is a place you babysit as you feed to grow and now to grow that level. And a time comes You are not a grown up, you shouldn't cry. Okay. Uh, let's go to six. But while the bride, everybody said delayed. Somebody said delayed. But while the bridegroom did what? Was delayed. They all and slept. Hey, delay. <laughs> there has been false alarms on the coming of Jesus. And those alarms have made us believe we are not ready. Ken Patrick told me the first time he got born again. You know some of us got born again three times. The first time. <laughs> he got born again. There are those who got born again. Then now they got born again seriously. And now when they began walking in that salvation in a serious way. So <laughs> we bless the Lord that at least you know. The, the point is a seed was planted. And he told me during the, two, two, the year 2000. When computers were supposed to shut down. You remember that time? Everyone was in Kesha. That is the time clubs made losses like COVID season. No one was in bars. They knew yes, Walienda heaven akifanyaje. Hini kumalisha narudi baada ya miaka. Elfu moja. Ndio And many of us bought the false alarm. And, and you see what these false alarms do. They reveal two things. One, they show the status of the church and the level of knowledge. The second thing, the false alarm also makes people to be excited. And once the excitement is low, they go back to apostasy. Are we together? There's a movement that came in Kenya. You know it? You know it? They said four horses have been released. And they even had their own designer clothes. And I told someone, after 10 years, majority members of this church, you'll find them in bars. Because they followed a prophet out of fear, not faith. They will witness, witness to you and tell you, Najwa kuna, kuna harusi ya mwana kondo. Yesu wana rudi. Yesu wana. So it was not even faith. And they will preach to you and fear will come. And I told someone, after this false alarm, Many will go back because when you threaten men to salvation, after the threat expires, they go back to their stuff. And that's why we have to preach. Is Jesus coming back? Yes. Is there fire judgment and we look at it, the fire is there, is real. But what is the Bible saying about his coming? There will be delay. And there are few things that happen when delay shows up. In the Bible, there are three things that are mentioned. There could be more. The first one, there was a delay in the book of Exodus. 
And because of that delay, men exalted a golden calf. Exodus 32 from verse 1. Because of that delay, men exalted a golden calf. So what happens because of the delay of the Messiah, apostasy will become the order of the day. What is apostasy? A falling away from the truth and the ways of God. Let's read if you can all read. Today I'm finishing on time. Are we together? And I promise you, I'm, I'm working on that display. So I have 20 minutes. Now when the people saw that Moses did what? Delayed coming down from the mountain. The people did what? Gather together to Aaron and say to him, Come make us gods that shall go before us for us for this Moses. The man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We don't know what else. The effect of delay is falling away. Moses stayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And because he delayed according to their time, they said, let us build a golden calf. That golden calf was an ancient Egyptian god. And the calf was a sign of strength and might. They worshipped oxes. Oxens. So they build a God and many people, the prophecy of the end time is that many will abandon the faith. That's the truth. Uh, it's not that they were not in faith. They began in faith, but because of delay. Remember when we saw the days of Noah, the Bible says it will be no more days eating and drinking, marrying and getting married, blessed beyond measure. Doors open, are married, children, everything is working and their desire for God will begin to go down. It was after Samuel delayed that Saul raised an altar and sacrificed. And the Bible says, and Samuel came immediately after the sacrifice. Let's look at 1 Samuel 13, 7 to 11. Those that the Lord has blessed to fly, there's something we call a schedule delay. You go to the airport, they tell you, sir, the weather is not very good in London or in Europe. Or the weather is not very good in Kenya for takeoff. So the flight will be delayed for 30 minutes. But the mystery is the landing schedule of Europe will not change because there was a weather problem in Kenya. Are you hearing me? So what happens is that the plane might leave late, but they will work out a system that it will land on time. Jesus will come on the appointed time. It may look like he has delayed. It is a program delay because it is in delay that endurance is tested. It is in delay. It is in the weight that also faith is tested. It is in the weight. And you know we are producing a micro generation. People want miracle now, now. They want Jesus now, now in their terms. I saw a gospel artist who went back to secular. And I remember by the time she got born again, the husband had brain tumor. And it was serious because the man was in Nairobi hospital. So she came to the Lord. And even sang a song that carried the whole story. Now the husband is healed. They forgot. Now I saw them on a poster performing in Oktoberfest. I said, how easily they forget. When the man was in tumor, you gather intercessors. And they know people who pray. Wicked men, they know people who pray. You, you, you ask yourself. You, you are drunkard cousins and uncles. They know you are a man of prayer. Anytime there is a crisis, guess who they call? Come on, where am I going? to call? Are you going to call Jehovah? To go na kashida kidogo kama familia. Na tunajua we ni muto maombi. Tafadhali tufukumbuke kwa maombi. Mona mungu atakuinua. And that's a man. And we have raised, and that's why we have raised a generation that don't want God. 
but they want the things of God. May God help you. That whether he will bless you or not, you will never leave him. Because we are here for something greater than the blessing. So I looked at that post and the Lord began to tell me, by the way, miracles don't translate to faith. I've done great things to my children and they left me. I've opened great doors and they left me. Yesterday we were, we were driving going to Mombe Girls. And I told the guy we were with, Ronnie, I told him, there are days we will take a matatu, load sound, and go to school and preach. And I said, now that we have cars, uh, 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 we need to double the effort. Why? Now we have means. But have you ever realized, the day you have nothing, unapandanduthi, unakuja church kesha. Wacha kandai kakamu. Masi ya tukua nangi, hata sandu unakuja nga second service, 12, kages preacher. Nasa ino uko na means. Iyo time uko na paki wapa, unangoja mat, uko na ka church mbaka four. Means he may come. Ah, Jesus. Delay is a test of the hearts of men. Hallelujah. Delay. And I tell you, we are in that scheduled delay. How many people do you know who began in faith? How many people were you praying with? How many people did you serve the Lord with? Some people a small level of education and now they are professionals. So a friend of mine on YouTube, Facebook saying now church has messed up many people. We are professionals. I say Jesus. Peter was a professional and the Lord asked him, can I use your vessel? Not hire. Use. And the man has made a loss in the sea the whole night. He is not hiring to tell him, boss, akuchakua fiti, chukua hi, at least unipe vessel. He says, can I use your vessel? And he says, yes, you can use. The man is repairing nets. And he tells him, now, in this kingdom, we use professionals so that we can open doors that are beyond your profession. And tells him, now launch to the deep. He tells him, we don't fish at night. He, he, in the day, he says, launch. There is a pathway in the sea where a fish go. Say, so cast the nets looks at him and says, Lord. And after the harvest, this is what surprises me. The man does not remain with the blessing. They abandon the harvest and follow the Lord of the harvest. I rather have the one that gave me the job possessing me than the job possessing me. That was the attitude. Is there a generation that can say, yes, Lord, you have blessed me, but I'll leave the nets with the fish. It will, imagine you've made a loss the whole night and you leave the fish. Hi, it takes an attitude. Delay. First Timothy 4 1. So don't be afraid when you see many people leaving the faith. It is a test of delay. Someone asked me, Pasi, hey, mbona ama gospel artist on achana na mungu ivo? Delay. The spirit expressly say, let's all read, that in those are days to come or last days. Some will depart from. What will they do? Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of. Huh. This is the cause of delay. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their own concern seared with a hot iron. Okay, hold it there. No, is it answering a few things? The greatest risk of delay is apostasy. Falling away from the ways of the spirit. That's the greatest risk. The problem will not be the power of assembly. No. I tell you the devil can even, pay, can, can even provide fare on Sunday for you to go to church. Where he knows you'll never be helped. At a, Sunday at Akwamusha 6. Of course it was in Gizzi. Na akupe fair. Uende pali usaidiki. Na bade yo fair. Ata ile kidogo luko me save. Uto anishu ya yote. Ju uko na appetite. Na yu appetite takpeleka kubaya. Apostasy. Apostasy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then they all entered into slumber. 
What is sleep? We sleep, number one, because we are tired. So it's when we need rest. Sometimes we sleep because we are tired. The second level of slumber, we sleep because we are disconnected from the reality of the hour. There is a sleep that comes as a disconnection from the reality. So you are not aware of what is happening. All the virgins were tired. All of them slept. The Bible says while men were yet sleeping, the devil was planting. There are times you cannot afford to sleep. But these ones were tired. Even the, the rushes one. They were tired of waiting. We get tired. We sleep sometimes. We, we stop praying as we ought to pray. We stop serving as we ought to serve. We stop giving as we ought to give. And we enter into a spiritual slumber. And both the wise and the foolish slept. They were tired. And, and they, they disconnected from the reality of the day. And it is the nature, even us. One day the Lord asked me a question. And he asked me, sir. Do you have the same effort you had while in the corporate? On Mondays, we used to have managers meeting. Monday. And the meeting used to be from 6 to 8. Monday. There are times I will carry my laptop and work from home until midnight. And the following morning, I'm supposed to be in the office by 7.30. On Fridays, I have targets. I'm meeting in the field. And Saturday, sometimes even Sundays, because I need an allowance. Now, I came to church. He asked me, are you giving the same? They used to pay me 40,000. So he asked me, for 40,000, you gave this labor. For eternity, what are you giving? Sijui kama ushai wana ukiingia kwa mambo ya Mungu watu wanaona kauna waste time. Hai. Kuna mtu anuniza pastor so amekuwa full time. Kaambia yeye. So kazi yako ni kukaa church. Nika kosa answer. But the Lord asked me what is the effort that you are putting now that you are full time? Have you ever woken up on Monday at 6 to come to my house? Do you carry your laptop and work until 12? Look at the effort we give to secular staff and look at the energy we give to God. Yet God is the one we need for this secular staff. Hallelujah. Kanisa tu kidogo kukwena kamkutano ka afternoon. Ah, meribu shedio. Meribu shedio. Eh, naona watu wanajuliza maswali. Eh, wacha iwashe, wacha iwashe vizuri. Bwana aswe sana. Because we have to be serious with the things of God. Are you getting me? And that's the time I told my wife, I know men who travel from January to December looking for money. Pastor ki travel live unasikia I know people who don't even work in the country. Six months, they're in Dubai, Qatar, sending money. Where we end a mission one month? You look like you are not a very good husband. So I told my wife, Vile nilikuwa nafanya kazi kwa corporate, hivyo ndo ndafanya kwa kanisa. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the scripture. That was a good point. Apotunaza build something. How committed are you to the things of God? Hallelujah. Yes. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered down. They were tired. And all of us, even me included, there are times I get tired and I look at my momentum, my frequency, my study life, and I say, no, I'm not where I used to be. I need to catch up. I need to read more books. I need to read the Bible more. I need to pray more. There are targets I had. And then you come back. Sometimes when you sleep, the enemy gets an opportunity to plant. By the time you open your eyes, something was planted in your marriage, in your family. While men were sleeping, the enemy was planting. The enemy knows he has no time. And then the Bible talks about something. And at midnight, somebody say midnight. midnight. Somebody say midnight. The Bible is not coincidental to give us the time. The, the Bible says everything will be fulfilled even an iota 
That means that midnight has a meaning. There are two times that are mentioned in the Bible. There is midnight and twilight. Midnight and? Now, have you ever read the scripture that says, Morning may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The darkest hour is always between when the sun is rising and darkness is coming to an end. That twilight, the break of dawn is always the darkest hour. It's always the darkest hour. May the Lord bless you with money to go to Mombasa and see the sun rise. And I tell you, you move from utter darkness to a, what do I call it? An immediate light. Una ukilala tu namke vikidogo unastukia kushaka kwa asubuhi. But five minutes ago, it was darkest hour. So the Bible begins to say, in your darkest hour, oh Jesus, that is the time of the emergence of light. And that's why it says, morning may endure for a night, but joy cometh because God, God is the source of joy. And the darkness can never stop the sun. When the sun is rising, it begins to conquer over darkness. So while, while joy is coming, it begins to conquer over sorrow. And that's why it says, morning may endure for a night, but joy joy cometh. The same way you cannot stop the sun from shining is the same way you cannot stop a man that is entering his joy time. Nothing can stop that man. And he says joy cometh in the morning. That's why the Bible says arise shine. It doesn't say arise and shine. The moment you rise, darkness cannot suffer you. You are not competing. And means there is an opponent. Shine means as you rise, you will shine automatically. For your glory has come. So the midnight hour. Are you ready for some few scriptures? You know, I'm a man that prays at the midnight hour. I love these hours. And I say it's because of my training. Hi. My friend Ronnie gave me stories yesterday. Hi. How, how he, he, he told us when you're, when you're in war. And and kwa kitu inaitua combat. Ama, ama, alita nini? Ambush. Ambush. Kwa, ukisikia ambush kwa military, ni either uishi ama ukufe. Kwa sababu, adui amekuja kwa maliza. So, an ambush, number one, is not prepared. It is random and they come to kill. Na kaniambia, the worst thing, ni haufai kupatia enemy mkono. Kupe enemy mkono, ni ati akikuto ukiwa high, heri ujue kuliku akubebo ukiwa high, because they will torture you. And I began to understand it in a spiritual way, that when the enemy comes for ambush, Jesus, it will take the hand of God to deliver you. Because he's not coming for peace, he's coming for destruction. But what I pick from that, that men trained to protect territories and men trains to to preserve and bring law and order they have different training traffic police no law and order traffic kufundishwa mbio na sheria ndoaweza kufukuza makanga na matatu na kama uko hapa na we ni traffic ni kazi mzuri ni mzuri lakini jeshi wanafundishwa territory Saudi ya risasi ni motivation ya jeshi. A friend of mine alikuwa anambia nime miss kwenda war. Namuuliza what do you mean? Ambia iko katu barracks ai bambi nime miss. You you know when they hear to what what nime kianza kusema Jesus yeye anasema something. Where is the war? They have been trained to war. Hallelujah. So a man trained for war, their schedule and programming of the mind is different. So some of us are traffic pastors. We are there to maintain law and order. But there are some in the spirit. You are territorial preservers. You can't sleep at the midnight hour. The Lord must wake you up and tell you this is the hour of militant men. Kwanzia Sambili Mbaka 5, Achia traffic. Okay, so... Nasia, na kama uko hapa please no any traffic usi nitafute. Niambia wewe pastor kwanza uongee na baba sana kuhusu traffic. Bwana asiwe sana. I'm I'm just giving an example. Are we together. So the midnight hour there are two things here. Is a transition hour. Is a transition hour. 
from one day to another. So the midnight hour is considered as a gate of transition. As a gate of transition. And, and that's why the Jesus came at the midnight hour. Because they were transitioning from morning to joy. These were virgins. The greatest joy of a virgin is the day of her marriage. The day when the groom will come. Hallelujah. I remember when I was getting married on that day, they delayed me. Oh, Jesus. My parents came late. Then geti kafungwa. Ita bia kufunga geti na faishe. Geti kafungwa. And so I couldn't call my wife. And so I was there. I had some few guys planted in the area. And I was asking them, kuna kaaje? Wanambia bibi bado wako na kosawa. Nasema, that was the greatest day. So imagine we are telling the church, your husband is coming. And they're like, guy, we are not ready. We need to repent. We need to get ready. That was, oh Jesus. I was waiting. When I heard BP, my heart began to beat. You know, uh, my heart was pumping with joy. You remember those lines? My heart was throbbing with joy, almost bursting my chest when I saw the bride and the love of my wife walking down the aisle. Hallelujah! That should be the joy of the church. Your time ziku anauliza, kiatu inakaa poa, nimefunga taifiti. No! I was ready to receive her. And that is not the time when she was asking, e, e, e. you know, she came with those mbutus. E, mbutu, because, you know, she took time on the mirror to get ready because that was the day she was waiting for. The church of Jesus, we have been waiting for that day. It's not a scare. It is the best day of our life. Hallelujah. It was the midnight hour. There are five things that happen at the midnight. Number one, deliverance. The midnight hour is full of spiritual activities. There are many spiritual activities. The children of Israel got out of Egypt. Because the angel of death moved at the midnight hour, Exodus 11.4. The operation of the angel was at the midnight, Exodus 12.29. Deliverance, deliverance. There is a lot of engagement at the midnight hour spiritually. And that's why when men are praying at that hour, they are securing destinies, breaking bondages. And at that hour, men are dealing with demonic opposition. Even the demonic world is very active at that hour. So it's a very good hour to align matters in the spirit, the midnight hour. If God has not given you the grace at that hour, please don't engage. Hallelujah. Allow them that are to engage too. Some of you, 3 a.m. is your hour. That is the time to deal with stolen goods. So whatever they have looted, you intercept and return them. Okay. Those are hours of prayer. So everyone has their watch according to their grace. Mine I know because it's territorial, apostolic, the midnight hour is my hour. Hallelujah. And I love it because I love war in the spirit because I have seen results. Acts 26, 16, 25. Acts 16, 25. Paul and Sila, the chains were broken at the midnight hour. That is the time they began to pray. They understood this was an apostle and a prophet. One was releasing a prophetic hymn as another one was releasing pro apostolic declaration. Because any warfare spiritually that engages territories and powers and principalities, it needs an apostolic and prophetic accompaniment. Okay. The foundations of the church were laid on the apostles, the teachings of their apostles and the prophets. Ushaijua mawe a foundation. See under Ugo. Ni raf, ragged, na ineza bear weight. Yondo apostolic ministry. We are not very, we, we don't have decorum. Hatunanga mutaratara. Na atupendwi sana, amen. Because we don't just interfere with patterns in the spirit. We also interfere with traditions of men. So unakutanga watu wa menda kwa njia flani, unachilia revelation tatu. Wanaona, pastor, unataku niambia umiakea ote tumekua tumekosea na vile tunonanga kama mungu kona sisi. So, it is ragged. So, the, the, the leaders of the day made a mistake. They arrested prophet Silas and Apostle Paul. Those anointings cannot stay in jail. Aye. You can't arrest them. One produced a prophetic hymn. 
The other one released apostolic decrees. See what was shaken? The foundation of the jail. Because another foundation was in town. Kaya. Hallelujah. Jesus. It was at the midnight hour. Samson. Judges 16.3. At the midnight hour. Samson uprooted the doors of the Philistines. Doors represents entrance. Transactions. At the midnight hour. Samson dealt with the transactions of the Philistine. They took away his head, his eyes, but the man took away their kid. That was an unfair battle. <laughs> okay. Do I have a church? Do pamoja. Listen. Ile makosa walifanya, walikuwa nangoja Samson wa muataka subuhi. Samson ali disrupt methodiao kwa spirit by uprooting the gate. So ata wakileta Delilah, gate za mafilistine zilikuwa na Samson. Na no maana aliomba kambia mungu just one more time. I took their gates, I can bring their pillars down. Who manages your gates in the spirit? Because they will control your life. The midnight hour Ruth received favor. Ruth 3.8. She received favor with Boaz. Ruth received favor with Boaz. Number four, the midnight hour. Two women were sleeping on the same bed. One slept on her child. And she woke up and discovered her child was dead. And she exchanged the children. And took the living child. And took the dead child and put on the other woman. It took the wisdom of Solomon to preserve this other child. So sometimes we say at the midnight hour, destinies are exchanged. Ha, hallelujah. A woman took, that is in the book of 1 Kings 3.20. A woman took a child, placed her on the other person and took the living child and placed her. This is an exchange of destinies. While men were sleeping. Kuna pali nafkango unachana na usingizi. There is a level in life usingizi na kuanga luxury. May you enter that level. Ah, some of you mependa usingizi sana. Pastor mini dreamer. <laughs> Niko hapa baba juu ya ma vision mbaya. Ha. Kuna wakati inabidu meshuka u content for vision. Number five, many deaths, death happen at the midnight hour. Doctors will tell you between 12 to 3. That's when many people die. There is a transition to glory or hell. Job 34.20. This one you have to read. Job 34.20. Many people die between that hour. Ikifika 4. Ndiyo vitanda zinanzanga kupeleko mochari. But between 12 to 3. Because it is a very active space in the spirit. Hallelujah. That's why if you have anyone in a near threat scenario. Contend between 12 to 3 you can preserve their lives. Because if there is a wrong hand placing a demand over their life, you'll be able to avert the hand. Are we together? And there are prayers you pray and you can sense. A friend of mine went for fasting for 40 days. 40. And he told, he, he, he came out of fasting. Now he's giving me the story later. And he told me, the breath he carried in the fufu amtu. So what he was telling me, after your 40 days, hakuwa anataka kuongea na mtu. Alikuwa natafta maiti. Ene tuwamfanye. Okay. Tunaeza jaribu. January. <laughs> but those were 40 days in the mountain, talking to God. So he left the mountain, looking for someone sick and dead. And he told me, whatever I carried, I knew it could raise a dead person. And he told me that the first person ali ongeana eh, ali neutralize your power. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, those are trainings. In a moment they die. In the middle of the night, the people are shaken and pass away. The mighty are taken away without so the midnight hour, that's when people die. Majority of them. So the oil is the Holy Ghost. The lamp 
is the word of God. And we are the vessels. So this is the picture I want you to have. As they carried the lamb and they had the oil, there was light. And that light led them when the bridegroom came, led them to the venue. When they showed up at the venue, the light was important to lead them to the venue. But the light was important to introduce them to the groom. I repeat. The light shone on their path. Are we together? So as they walked, they saw where they were going. But this light also revealed their faces. So it was the night hour. Jesus was waiting for his groom. So he, well, with his bride, as he opened the door, he will see and see the light and the oil have changed the person and there is a countenance on their face that is like my countenance. So this oil and word is there to change us. That's why I said this is something that has to do with the church. Jesus, when he looks at you, he does not expect to see you. He expects to see a reflection of himself. That is why the foolish virgins could not receive their oil. Because the one I have is for my working. You need your own oil. Because the Holy Ghost wants to work on you in a different way. The one I have is working on me. Killing my pride, killing my ego, killing my appetites. You need the Holy Ghost for yourself. They were foolish they even though they could buy the oil. The Bible says, come and buy from me without money. Listen, the, the, the real thing is that when this word is mixed with the Holy Ghost, it will begin to produce Christ in you. This word mixed with the Holy Ghost will make you Christ-like. So Jesus was not looking for Pastor T. Jesus was looking for himself in Pastor T. So if he can't find the fruit of the Spirit, you are not qualified for this marriage. Allow me to say this. The church has many people speaking in tongues but going to hell. The church has many people healing the sick but going to hell. The church has gifted, anointed but going to hell. The church has very few carriers of the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Are you guys born again? The things you hear. And you wonder, are you guys born again? But that's why me for me, you will never intimidate me by how long you pray. I don't go to for one eight hours. You won't intimidate me. You'll never intimidate me by the tongues you speak. Those things. They don't intimidate me. Where bigger does a kihibrania? Hakuna skuta ni stoa. Bigger. Zote. How tani intimidate? Na vilu unakote Bible na kigriki. How tani intimidate? No. Those ones. They don't intimidate me. Your personal walk with God. That will intimidate me. Not your depth. But they, I don't even know if there is a depthometer measure depth because we can teach technical things and look deep but we have never stepped in the healing waters of salvation with all this death bitterness uttering mysteries now how is he forgive praying for eight hours on a struggle na last Healing the sick. Na pride in a room. Because of a few coins. And that's why. If you ask me. This parable speaks to all of us. To audit our walk. To audit our walk. The challenge with. Pentecostalism. If I may call it for lack of a better word. Is that. We exalted charisma above fruit. That's why we are called the charismatic movement. Charisma is the gift of the spirit. But we never exalted the fruit of the spirit. The Bible says if you have beef with your neighbor, 
Don't even give an offering. Go make peace. Those were the teachings of Jesus. That today you don't talk to your cousin, your brother, your sister, a member of your family. Don't bring your offering before you make peace. Otherwise, God does not accept it. But what is our teaching? The bigger you give, the more blessed you are. But God is seeking for fruit. The reason why the spirit is not moving as before. The hearts of men became casual. The church of Corinth saw the power, but they still struggled in the fruit. Is someone hearing me? And let me tell you the truth. We can be active in church. We can do all things. And when he comes, we have no oil in our lamp. We just had the lamp, no oil. And that's the time we are running around and we can't buy it. My prayer is that may we move from loving the power of God to valuing the presence and the fellowship of him. We are in the age of the Holy Ghost. There will be delay. You know, I've, 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 I've been a pastor for a while. And I tell you the truth, there are people and even sometimes I audit my life and I'm like, no God, this is not in you. There's a level you reach and begin to tell God any nature that is not consistent with you, let it never find expression in my life. Are we together? A man shared a story. How true it is, I don't know. And he said the, the man that pioneered Indian philosophy of religion by the name of Mahatma Gandhi was in South Africa. He had read the Bible. He was excited. And he said, wow, I want to meet these guys. The first church he entered, he said, I read the Bible, but I, when I met the Christians, I realized that's not the faith I wanted. The man possibly would have died an evangelist of India, but he met a Christian that never bore fruit. And his attitude about faith shifted. May you be the salt of the world. May you be the light that cannot be hidden. May you, may, may you allow the Holy Ghost to prune you. Hallelujah. Because any tree that does not bear fruit, the Father will cast it into the fire. Refuse to be a useless tree in the vineyard of El Elyon. Let your heart be open to the chastisement, the discipline, the correction, and the molding of the Holy Ghost. It is not easy. Some of you will lose relationships. Some of you will lose deals and businesses. Some of you, there are many sacrifices, but again, it's not in vain. I say it's not in vain. Let's stand up on our feet. I just want us to take two minutes in prayer. Hallelujah. And I just want you to pray for your life. Are we together? Are we together? Allow me to say this. One day I was in prayer. And the Lord told me, I need to circumcise your heart. Even this time. I stole on the keys. Even this time. told me, sir, I want you to go back to high schools and win souls. And I knew the Holy Spirit was working on me. Because high school, there is no protocol. You know, here church, ikipineza kuingia. Tio kona pastor pita hapa, before usumami ya mekubebea baibu, ya mekwekea hapo. Ukikoho akidogo maji menetu hapo moto. Ukitoka umefuatua, hey pastor, what will you take? Ineza kuingia kwa kichwa. Now you're a man of importance. High school, they don't care. Unajibebea Bible na majiako na festival. So I was invited in a school and the principal lectured me. Akaniambia, remember this is a national school, you need to be here on time. Sa hiyo ni pali naenda two hours. You need to be here on time at eight. The meeting begins at exactly 8 and you need to be done by 11. We can't change the program because of you. So see you, see you tomorrow. Thank you. And this is the teacher's number. Uh, call the teacher. You'll be received. students. Mr. Mujiri unijenga sana. Makusin. Chaya student. Na kaimati flani nika crisp. 
ni ngumu <laughs> hakuna upasta Mungu anaanza kuangalia roho ya upasta imekuingia eti sasa kuna pale uwezi enda kuhubiri <laughs> juko na kanisa ni muru na washirika bwana asifiwe one man of god asked me pastor unaacha sadaka sande unaenda kuhubiri shule kwambio ndio inafanya generation ipote because we don't preach for these bugs we preach for him hallelujah and when i talk about this i'm not talking about big things oh don't get me wrong i'm not talking about i don't know you have been sleeping around oh you have been drinking smoking weed if that's what you do you're not born again you just need jesus and the holy ghost i'm talking about people in god but they are buttons the holy spirit must press today there are phone calls that will be made after this service you saying sorry ni simu ungeipiga but unajua leo lord anything that is not of you let it not find residence in my life Someone took me through a journey. Warfare. And then the same person texts and says, I'm sorry. And the Holy Ghost tells me, forgive. I can't even share the story. I'll cry. It was bad. Almost losing ministry. Yani kabzo no no ni shaitania meinuka. Na mungo na kwambia, samehea. There are things that must be shed off. People will know that we are Christians, not by our confession they will sense this one is a carry of god hallelujah hallelujah let me have the worshipers there's a song that always say holiness is all that you want mold my heart that i may conform to your nature just begin to make that prayer in two minutes you know you know yourself bonus if you will there are bitternesses there are natures there are things listen they don't they don't make you better they hinder the operations of the spirit the oil is fluid the oil carries velocity the moment we are rigid the oil does not flow and we become them that suffer allow the velocity of the oil to begin to move in your vessel there are things in your life that must be dealt with by the oil hallelujah i'm talking about very personal issues they are matters kaposa tire any nature that is not of the father let did not find expression in my life anything i refuse to be a foolish virgin i refuse to be in charge sanctified justified but not qualified i refuse to know scripture and not live according to the standards i refuse not to obey the work of the holy ghost he said i'm gonna leave you with a helper his name is the holy ghost we have a helper we cannot receive a helper if we don't need help jesus knew that my church will need help i can't leave them alone i you must leave them with a the helper let your fellowship with the holy ghost let it be perfected may you enter a level where the whispers of the spirit will begin to be commands in your life enter dimension whereby the holy ghost will flow in your life flow in your business flow in all that you do open your heart jesus said i knock i knock whoever hears my voice and open his heart i shall dine with them this was the church in laodicea they were fallen they were backslidden they had kicked jesus out the same way we have kicked the holy ghost out but he's saying i am knocking if anyone opens i am tired of being deep in mysteries i am tired of mastering tongues i am tired of looking like a christian it's time to bear fruit time to bear fruit time to walk in light time to walk in life time to walk in forgiveness time to walk in wholeness kapala sataya re kapala rosa mana celebrate celebrate holy spirit purchase
by just Holy Ghost any nature that is not your nature any nature that is not your nature let it not reside in me pride must bow my ego must bow my status must bow Karamasela, my medals they must be surrendered unto you delay will not make us enter into apostasy we shall stand in faith and stay in faith Thank you, Holy Ghost. Holiness, holiness is what you want. Do you know that song? Yes. Holiness is what you want. Come on, lady, Peter. Come. This is our declaration. Let the Lord deal with our hearts. Ask me, why is it Africans we pray a lot but no results? And the Lord began to tell me, Our hearts have never been broken to Him. We were introduced to rituals and religion, but we have never been broken to Him. We, we still carry things in our hearts, we still carry things in our hearts. 
And my prayer is that you will permit the Holy Ghost to begin to deal with you. Hallelujah. When we were doing chemistry in high school, you will take pure water. And the boiling point of pure water was 100. But the moment you introduced impurities, you altered with the 100 degrees. It took more time to heat the water because the impurities robbed the fire at the heat. And so it looked like it is labor to set that water on fire. Our hearts are like pure water. The moment there are impurities, it will take more spiritual labor to set us on fire. Hallelujah. In this life, we will be stepped upon. In this life, we will be offended. In this life, we will feel like we want to revenge. In this life, we will have the opportunity to do things. But above all, the Holy Ghost is the one that controls us. Are we together? And, and let me say this under the anointing because I don't know why, but I just feel in the spirit there is a lot of bitterness in the atmosphere. One of the things to deal with bitterness is what David did. He took his matters. Saul was attacking David for no cause. The man was faithful, fought the battles of Saul, won and the glory went back to the kingdom of Saul. But Saul kept on fighting him. And the man took the matter and said may the Lord avenge for me. Do you know what that means? This matter I have left it with the Lord. Literally. When I was a young boy my brother used to bully me once in a while and there are times I would run and tell mom Joram is doing one to three and I will leave whether he is punished or not. I know I have left the matter with a person in this house that cannot be defeated to deal with this man. Are you getting me? And that's why there are matters we carry and say, Lord, I can't fight this war. Carrying this person in pain doesn't help me. Being offended doesn't add value. It's impurifying my heart. And it will take more labor for me to connect with you. I lay it on the altar. Lord, deal with that matter. And I want to assure you, one of the ways to spend less time in prayer is when you have a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Meaning that impurities cut spiritual sight. And let me say this. Majority of men and women of prayer, they are not fought with ordinary temptations. There is a level you reach in prayer. Women are not the issue. Fornication is not the issue. Men are not the issue. There is a level you reach. It is the status of your heart in prayer that matters. And at that level, you are fought with offense. So that you come to that door, Peter, and you begin to raise a voice. And God looks at your heart and says, we cannot deal. Until it comes to a place where pure oil can meet with a pure heart. Are you getting me? These are secrets. And I've always prayed and told the Lord, this heart of stone, take it away. And give me your own heart. So that I can love as you love and forgive as you. Forgive because Christ looked at them on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. That was the height of his pain. He never looked at them after resurrection. After resurrection it was easy. The wounds were not there. And the men that he said forgive them were shouting and saying save yourself. You healed others in yourself. And he's at the height of pain. Nails. The throw, the thorns, the spear hanging there in that pain. In fact they say the more in that level to speak
speak, you needed to breathe in and breathe out. And that breathing in was more painful. And that is what made people die. Because as you are breathing in, it's like you are trying to lift yourself on the cross. Meaning that for him to utter those words, maybe he was even murmuring them. Because they were the most difficult words to say in that status of pain. But they came from his heart. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Then he said, it is finished. And in thy hands, I commit my spirit. At the verge, at the peak of his pain, he uttered words that are very rare. I didn't used to understand why. I watched sometimes family TV when I was young. Look at these preachers. What they are saying. I, I was struggling with unforgiveness. And I'm asking, is unforgiveness a struggle? Now today I understand. And I began to look at these people who are saying I'm struggling with unforgiveness. The prayers they are making, very simple. And then I saw us who struggle with unforgiveness. They are. Hine maombi tunapiga na hakuna results. Na tunatoka, tumesweat. Because we come for feelings. Niliomba ni kasikia kitu. Now we need to move from feelings to status. That my heart, Lord, is pure. Take my heart and mold me. Take my heart. Take my life. Just one more time. Transform me. Take my will. Conform. virgin. Today you are receiving the oil that separates the foolish from the wise. And I declare that oil will begin to move in your life and lead your life and cause a discourse and navigation over your life. Let the velocity of the oil begin to give motion to your spirit. Let the velocity of the oil begin to give motion to your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I declare under this anointing, everyone under the sound of my voice, you cannot be a foolish virgin. You cannot be a foolish virgin. Let the oil take charge. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Before we receive an offering, could there be anyone that wants to give his life to Jesus? Just lift up your hand. We want to pray with you. Just lift up your hand. We want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Oh, thank you. Come, come, my sister. Just come, come. Let's celebrate her. Oh, my goodness. I believe we can do better than that church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Is there anyone else? The Bible says now is salvation. This is the day of salvation. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? You're saying, Pastor, I just need a relationship with Jesus. I have the goods of Jesus. I have prayed. He has answered my prayers. But I've never begun a relationship with him. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? One ask if you Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? There is a, a lot of grace in the house. And I'm seeing people just releasing men. A lot of forgiveness is taking place. A lot of healing of the heart. 
Let me tell you, you can be healthy physically, but sick emotionally. You can have a healthy body, but a sick heart. And you can also have a healthy body, a sick, a healthy spirit. I mean, a healthy body, a healthy heart, and a sick spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate her. I believe we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. My father told me, if you want to know Jesus is in a church, is when you see salvation. Because it's only him who can save. The Bible says no one comes unto the father unless called by the son. So he's here. If you are doubting, know he's, he's here. And if he can save, he can heal. And if he can heal, if there are any matters that are beyond men, may they be settled in this atmosphere. In Jesus' name. Let's stretch our hands. Let me just have the two of you, Mercy, and just stand behind these ladies uh, and just uh, begin to pray for them. Let's pray for them. These are our sisters. This, this is destiny. This is greatness. Pray for them the way you'll pray for your own sister. And those who are standing at the front, just take time and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that them that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord. He is your father. You never came to him because of anything. You came to him because he loves you. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us while we were yet still sinners. Even today, this is a response to the love that was manifested in Calvary. Father, I thank you for these two daughters. This day was ordained for them. And now I receive them in the household of faith. And I declare to today marks a new dawn a new beginning in their life a new journey in their life and I announce right now that dear Lord anything in the past has now been broken any battle any failure any sin of the past has now been covered and washed by the blood of Jesus today they are standing cleansed justified sanctified and above all as members of eternity the Holy Ghost shall come upon them as he came upon the church in the days of Pentecost cost and all those are standing here I just want you to pray this prayer after me just say Lord Jesus today willingly I come to you knowing that I'm a sinner in need of a savior and today by faith I receive the forgiveness of sins and I confess with my mouth because I have believed in my heart that Jesus died and resurrected, I now confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior over my life. From today, I'm a new person. The old is gone and now I am in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Let me be among the wise virgins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, even now. Father, thank you for your daughters. I bless them as I receive them. May this be a day of reckoning. Turn around, a shift in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know their battles, their cries, their tears. Let them launch into a new chapter from today. Fill them with a new song because a new day has just begun. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. 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 May God bless you. I'll ask you, let, let's get their names and just begin to walk with them. Hallelujah. This is the best offering we can receive today. Souls in the kingdom. My goodness. Oh, Jesus. What's your name? Yes? Lorraine. And you? Felicia. Welcome to the kingdom. We love you already. We love you already. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. We have finished on time. Amen. I've kept time. You need to encourage me. Amen. 
Amen. Felicia and Lorraine. Heaven is, heaven is gaining, hell is losing. Amen. Let me tell you, my desire is that because we are going to move from this venue, Uh, 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 amen. Uh, yes. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. Yo mimi ni mimi ni shakuwa sponsor. Yo nywele unanyo. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate this man. Baba tunakushukuru ni kwa sababu ya mwana wako. Endelea kumuinua, endelea kumlinda, endelea kumtunza. Wewe ndiye ambaye unapatilisha maisha ya watu. Na ni wewe ambaye unapatia watu hat mampia. Na ni wewe ambaye unainua. Jehova wacha ndugu huyo ya kuishia milele. Na wacha awe ushuhuda hata katika mataifa. Na ni katika jina lako tumeomba na tumeamini. Amen. Amen. Uyo tulienda kwa chief. Mbaka chief akatuambia uyu mumchukue. Mune saidia kazi yangu. Bona sifiwe. And he got born again during the prayer rally. Amen. So you, you've gotten their names. Make sure you call them. Are, are we ready to give? Are we ready to give? Tell your neighbor is giving time. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me say this. Um, sometimes I don't put a lot of emphasis on giving. Amen. I don't shout. I don't quote scriptures. But just know in your heart we need your money. Are we together? Just know in your heart we need your. Be faithful with your tithe, fast fruit, and any giving that the Lord leads you. And I want to assure you. We don't need to shout because we are giving. Let's just, let me speak a blessing. Father, we thank you. And dear Lord, we thank you because of substance that you have placed in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, because we are picking a part of it as custodians and we are surrendering it to you because we love you. You said unto Moses, that indeed go to the camp and collect an offering for me. This is your offering and we are giving to you because we love you. And we are giving not because we have been coerced or even forced. We are giving because we have a revelation of giving. And we are giving above all because we love you. And you have entrusted us with your wealth. It is an honor to worship you with our substance. I thank you Lord for everyone giving their tithe, their fast fruit. All manner of giving. Let the blessings tied to those givings be upon them. And now I declare even as we step for this coming week. That your sons and daughters are blessed. I declare this is a week of testimony, a week of open doors, a week of new songs. I declare this week the power of God will be available in every sector. You have no covenant with death. You have no agreement with accidents. You are going in and coming out is blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. The wisdom of Zion is upon you. Them that are in the marketplace, we command merchants and prophets and even people to come to your places. We declare divine networks. We declare promotion. We declare elevation. May the Lord lead you to the place of your inheritance. May your lines fall in pleasant places. As you walk out of this door, you are walking a new man full of the power of God ready to conquer and do the master's work. You are blessed in Jesus name. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. <laughs>